Welcome to EDD 918, Organizational Systems and Behavior. And uh, this is just a brief, well, hopefully it's going to be brief, introduction video for you, um, just like we would normally do on a first day of class, walking through the syllabus and talking a little bit about some of the major course assignments and things like that and kind of what you can expect for the course as a whole um, and especially this first week of class. So you might want to have the syllabus handy. It's not required. I'm not going to read through the syllabus word for word. I know all of you can read, um, but there are some highlights that I want to hit. So it might be helpful for you to have that there handy for you. Um, my name is Ryan Mears, and for those of you that I may not have had in class before, and um, I'm excited to have you in this course. Honestly, organizational systems and behavior, um, while it sounds a little maybe um, boring to some people, it, it actually, to me, I, I found it very interesting. I remember when I first started, when I first took some classes in this area of org systems, organizational communication, organizational behavior, and um, just some really n cool ideas started opening up to me. And one of the reactions that I had, and I've um, had feedback from students the last two summers that I've taught this course, they've, they've had a similar reaction. Um, and it was, oh, I can, I can see this happening. Now I know, you know, now I know why these things are going on in the organizations that I'm a part of. Um, you know, I, I kind of noticed them before, but I never really had words for them or I never really thought about or, or knew why these things were happening. And so this course is actually very, very practical. At least I think so. And I hope that you will find it practical for you as well. Um, it's the kind of course that... Um, I, I hope it is, I intend it to be, and, and I've found that a lot of students um, agree with me. It's the kind of course you can watch a lecture or do some of the reading, and like the next morning you're at work and you go, oh wow, I, I see this applying, I see this happening. So um, it's a fun course, at least I think so, and so excited to be on this journey with you this semester. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the syllabus a little bit. And um, if you see my eyes not looking at the camera, it's because I'm going to pull the syllabus up here uh, so that I can see it and um, walk through it with you. Y you see all of the information there um, as far as my contact information. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Um, uh, my cell number which I just realized I didn't put on there, but I will put that on the Canvas site for you. Um, feel free to text me um, at my cell number. I don't mind that. It's 402-450-2955. Um, you, can, you can call. Um, text is usually best, um, just because if I don't recognize your number, um, I don't know about you, but I tend, sorry about the hop there, um, I tend to get some robocalls, and what I found is they use numbers um, that I, you know, some of them are in Nebraska, others sometimes I get calls from Texas, so if I don't recognize the number, I might not answer it, so maybe shoot me a text the first time and say, hey, this is so-and-so, I'm wondering if we could chat or if you have a quick question. Email is great. And you can email me directly at that Clarkson College email address or email me through Canvas as well. Um, any of that is fine. Um, finding me on campus, uh, especially in the summer months, uh, is a little hit or miss. And so um, probably best just to um, shoot me an email. And, and if we need to talk, we can set up a time for a phone call. Um, and that way I know I'm available and we can chat that way. Um, the required text you see there is the essentials of organization, organizational behavior. Hopefully you've been able to grab onto that. And there are going to be other readings. So don't get um, too excited saying, oh, it's just one textbook and, you know, it's not that thick. Now, the good news is there are no other books for you to buy. Um, that's the only one that you have to pay money for. 
Uh, the rest of the readings will e either be books that you will find or articles that I supply to you. So um, that's the good news. I tried to keep it pretty inexpensive from a textbook standpoint. Um, I just I have strong opinions about the cost, the ridiculous cost of textbooks. So I try and keep it inexpensive for you. See the course objectives there, all of that. All, you can read through all of these things. I, I would encourage you to read through them so you know what we're covering um, and especially responsibilities and, and things like that. Um, I'm going to hop down to the course calendar. That's where I'm going next um, in case you're wondering. And you'll notice probably the big things, the, one of the biggest things to highlight for you is that our weeks begin on Monday morning, 8 a.m., and they end the following Sunday at 11.59 p.m. And those are our central standard times. And I, I point that out. Um, most of the modules, my goal is to have them open. Well, my goal is for all of the modules, and, and I should say most of them, this will happen, uh, is to have them open for you even a week or, or more ahead of time. Um, it doesn't always happen, but that's my goal. And, and to have the major assignments, um, I, I think by the time you watch this video, um, all the major assignments should be all posted for you. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm recording this, this video somewhat early, so I haven't got those done yet. But by the time you watch it, they should be there. Um, but assignments, major assignments, are always due on Sunday night whatever week that they fall on, Sunday night, 11.59 Central Standard Time. I I try to establish that that's consistent in all of my courses that I teach. Just that way, there's no mystery. The one exception to that is the final assignment. And the final assignment will be due on the last Friday of classes for this semester at 11.59 Central Standard Time. Uh, p.m. 11:59 p.m. That's the one exception because the semester ends on a Friday. So other than that, those those major course assignments are always due on a Sunday. So I just say that also that can be your check on me. If you're looking at a major assignment, you look at the calendar and you go, wait a minute, that's like a Monday night. Um, that means I did something wrong. So feel free to flag me and say, um, I think your dates are off, because that happens sometimes. I look at the calendar wrong or count on my fingers wrong or whatever. So Mondays to Sundays, that's what we have. And um, if you look at the course calendar, either right now or later, what you'll notice is I have for this semester, each module is one week long, except for, there's one exception to that, and that is um, weeks 10 and 11. So that's going to be module 10 will cover two weeks. And that's the section on um, organizational systems. And we'll be talking about systems thinking and complexity thinking during that week. And then the final module, which is week 12, but module 11 um, is just a wrap up. And really, uh, I might have some information for you that week, but that week is really designed to it, it's a finals week. And um, typical course or typical college schedules, you, you really don't meet during finals week. You have a final exam or a final paper, and you will have a final paper due that week. So there won't be much from me that week for you to do. Um, it'll just be a matter of you finishing up your paper and things like that. Obviously, more to come on that. So you can look at the course calendar, and what you'll see is for readings, I put C Canvas on all of them. Um, and then for assignments, see Canvas for assignments. Just what I found is, um, as I've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, there can get some confusion because sometimes if, if I mess up one thing between the syllabus and Canvas, it can cause a lot of confusion for students. So I've decided what I'm going to be doing is um, directing you to Canvas. For the readings and for the assignments. That way that's the most current and up-to-date information and hopefully I got everything right in there. So you can check those out there. You can see the topics, um, the focus, the foci uh, that we'll be covering as well as the topics for you there. Down looking at the evalu evaluation methods, 
um, what you'll see is that we have um, several ways that I'll, I'll be assessing you for this semester. Um, one is the discussion participation, and there are 10 of those, and those are each worth 20 points. Those are going to be some specific discussion questions that I'll be asking you to respond to on Canvas. There will be a rubric uh, for each one. It's going to be the same rubric for all of the discussion posts, but it'll be there for you to look at. Um, and so what it will be is I will be grading those discussion posts and responses for, uh, by you. So I'm, I'm looking for quality. Um, and I've not had a problem with this in any of my classes so far. Um, there, so far, knock on wood, um, I've not had to reach out to any of the students and say, hey, can you increase your quality in your posts? Um, I found the doctoral students all do a great job at that, and so I, I know you will do fine. Um, but what that grade will be is... Um, 12 of the points will be the quality of your initial post and then eight of the points will be uh, four points each. Did you respond with a quality response to two of your classmates? Now, you can respond to more than two. I would encourage you to do that. But the grade would be two, so four points each for that. So hopefully it make, makes sense. 12 points for your initial post and then four points each for the other responses. Now, I should say this. For the discussion participation, um, that one is a little bit different as far as due date. Most of those discussion participations, I've, I've tried to be consistent with this as well. Those are due, your initial post is due on Thursday of the week that we're in. So today you're watching this. If you're watching it on the first day of class, it's Monday. Your discussion post is due on Thursday night by 11.59, your original, your initial post. The reason for that is then you have two, really three more days to do, a, do quality responses to two of your classmates. And so I've found by having the initial due on Thursday, that gives everyone plenty of time to think through and give quality responses. Um, because if I don't put that due date on the initial, what can happen is then some people aren't posting until Sunday evening. And that puts all of you in a bind because then you're sitting there trying to wait for people to post. And so that's the requirement so I'll be checking and you've got your initial post by Thursday evening 11:59 p.m. central and then you have until Sunday night 11:59 p.m. central to do your two responses and, and I found that works well um, if for some reason you get real busy well we'll come back to that so that's the discussion participation reading responses um, I'm going to actually have a video, separate video, to talk a little bit more about that. That's something new that I'm trying, um, and, and I, I like the idea. I hope it works. Um, but basically, um, this is going to get you to engage a little bit more with the reading so you're not just reading to get it done, and, and it stretches the reading out. And so uh, you'll be doing that. Book report, you can look at that. You're going to be selecting a book and actually recording an oral book report for me and um, then uploading that more to come. You can see Canvas for that. The Carl White case study analysis, uh, again, I'm going to have a separate video for that, and I don't want to say too much about it at this point, but it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, and then the conceptual paper, and you can see the instructions for that. So those, that's um, how all of that works. I, and I want to come back to the discussion thread for just a second and say this. Um, there are going to be other discussion questions throughout the semester. Um, it will be clear which ones are graded because I'll say this is a graded and it'll have the rubric with it. There are going to be multiple other opportunities for you to respond to discussion questions and those are not graded. I want to encourage you to give quality time to all of the discussion posts. Obviously, your, your focus is going to be more on the graded ones. I get that. That's, that's understandable. 
but I want to encourage you to participate in all of the discussion posts because the the way I look at it is this um, doctoral courses in a face to face format one of the the joys of a doctoral program in my opinion is being able to have great discussions with classmates and professors and, and kick around ideas. Um, doctoral classes aren't so much about content download from the instructor. Um, there's some of that and, and I'm going to provide lectures for you and I'll say more about that in a second. But a lot of the value of a doctoral program is being able to engage in, in discussions. So in an online format, our venue for that are the discussion posts and responses to those in Canvas. And so I have some of them that are forced for you and, and those are the graded ones. But then others, the way I conduct my face-to-face -face classes, a lot of discussion, kind of Socratic method. Hey, what do you think about and have you thought about? So there's gonna be those, a lot of those opportunities too. And let me encourage you to participate in those. Now those obviously they're not graded so it might be you could get away with a little quicker response or um, a reaction or it's not required that you have an initial post and a response to others um, maybe you don't have an initial post maybe you just react to others or maybe you have an initial one and don't react to anyone else so I, I want to make sure that the the pressure is off on there for you but highlight how important I think those are and I know you might be thinking well if they're so important why aren't they graded because I've tried that in the past and what I found then is I get um, okay responses, but it's more I need to do this to get it done so I get the grade. So, um, or then just a lot of stress and panic. Oh, Dr. Mears, I couldn't get to that discussion and I feel so badly. And so let's, let's take that pressure off and just have some really good discussions there. But remember some of them are graded, so make sure you do those. Um, the lectures. Um, my goal is to have about an hour to an hour and a half total lectures for each week. Um, those are going to be split up. I'm going to shoot to have videos about 20 to 25 minutes is my ideal. Um, and so um, hopefully that's you know easy. That's a chunk of time that you can watch and manage and things like that. So that's my goal. Um, but I I think the lectures are important. Obviously, a three-hour class, if we were meeting together, I, I wouldn't fill three hours each time we met with lecture. We'd have a lot of discussions and case studies and things like that. And so that's what the rest of the class is for. Um, but those, those lectures will be posted for you, again, by Monday morning of each week. I'm hoping to have them done way ahead of time. Um, and you can kind of watch those at your own pace, um, but about an hour to hour and a half each week of lectures. And then the other readings, just monitor those. Um, I'm gonna put on some of them, uh, like there'll be articles and things, and sometimes, uh, and I'll always make it clear, but sometimes there will be articles that I'm, you know, it'll say you, you need to read these for this week, because that might be some of what your reading response is, but then there'll be others that I'll, I'll just say, hey, this is just, you know, this is extra. It's about the topic that we're talking about right now. If you're a big reader, I'm a big reader, um, and I like to gather as much information as possible. Um, and depending on how much time you have, others of you, you you'll be so busy and everything, you're gonna say, you know, maybe I'll lock those away for a rainy day and get back to them or whatever. Um, and so they'll be there just for your added benefit if you want to take advantage or not. Um, I want you to stay in contact with me. This course is um, offered in the summers, and summers are not as busy and yet busier at times, and I get that. Um, if you're gonna be going on vacation for a week, um, and, I, you know, and you say, but I've got this course, let me know. And, um, you know, let's let's work around things. Um, maybe you can get a discussion ahead of time, uh, done ahead of time. If if there's one that's due that week that you need to get done, let's work on that because I want you to be able to have a life too. Um, and vacations are important, and time with family is important. So, um, you know, or maybe you're going camping and there's literally no internet access. Um, so let's just stay in touch with me. Or if things are happening in your life. 
Um, you know, um, as as I'm recording this, we're still in the midst of the COVID-19 um, quarantine. You know, that was an unexpected event for a lot of students, doctoral students who are also teachers, as many of you are, um, this last semester. And so that caused a lot of a lot of upheaval and, and insanity and chaos. So things happen that are out of our control. Just stay in contact with me and let me know. Um, and, and we'll work together for this. My um, overwhelming goal for you is that this is a profitable learning experience. Um, I'm not a big checklist guy. I hope you're not just going through this course just to check it off. Um, I believe in absorbing all of the learning possible. And so that's my goal for you for this course. And so the lectures are, are going to be more from my experience. I've had a, quite a bit of experience working in organizations, organization development, things like that. And so um, I hope that you'll enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions. One more thing that I need to point out is I do have under the general course and in, um, information module, there's a discussion forum um, for course questions. And that's just a spot. Um, I learned that from somebody else. Uh, to have those are for as you have questions that come up about assignments or things like that 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 a lot of times if you have the question someone else does too and so feel free to post those in there and I'll monitor it pretty frequently and respond to you in that obviously if it's a more personal question or something specific to you to you uh, you probably email me those questions um, but again, if it's a, a general one um, that you're wondering about, feel free to ask it in there and that can be helpful to everybody. So looking forward to a great class and um, we'll be seeing you in the discussion forums. And again, reach out to me at any point with any questions. Have a great day.